the overall body of spiritual teachings tells us we're trapped in illusions, not seeing clearly, we're hypnotized. Not only do we have illusions, we actually struggle to keep them in place. We work really hard to keep our illusions. We cling to them. We hold on to them. We don't want to let them go. We put a lot of time and energy into trying to make these illusions real. The very things we're clinging to and trying so hard to make work are the things very often that lead ultimately to some form of disillusionment or dissatisfaction. We realize that those illusions no longer serve us or life intervenes and we have to move out of those illusions and that's often a, a painful process. The process of being disillusioned is often painful and uncomfortable because we've identified with what we've created. We can be tempted to base our sense of self-worth on whether we're in a relationship or not and how that relationship is going. Someone may feel that if they're not in a relationship, then there's something wrong and then they must do something about that as quickly as possible. We think of ourselves as I am this, I am that, and their sense of I am, a sense of who we are is locked into that particular illusion. So as the illusion itself is dissolving, we feel as if part of us is dissolving. So we have illusions and we're clinging to them and we're trying to make them work and trying to make them real. Yet all the time, the spiritual guides of the race have been telling us, that those illusions are what stop us seeing the ultimate reality, that stop us being able to embody this enlightened love state that leads to deepest happiness and fulfillment. In many countries and cultures in the world, romantic love is presented as a way to happiness. In fact, to some it's the way to happiness. But let's really look more deeply at that and to what extent the romantic love does actually lead us towards the goal of enlightened love and to what extent is it an illusion that's getting in the way of our experience of enlightened love. So on the one hand we've got so many aspects of modern culture impressing upon us the importance of romantic love. On the other hand so many romantic relationships and marriages end in some kind of breakup. If a marriage ends and there's kids involved and there's often lots of financial implications of the ending of the relationship. Things can get very bitter and acrimonious as the relationship breaks down. Or there can be a couple who are not really happy together, but they struggle on because of the kids or or out of a fear of being lonely, having no money or whatever. A large number of romantic relationships either end or they struggle. Of course, there are relationships that do do well. There are marriages that work. And more about that later and some ideas as to why those ones work. So looking at the theme as romantic love and illusion, it helps to really look at the, the overall concept of illusions and how they affect us. Because that will give us a wider view on illusions in general. And then we'll have a, a better perspective for looking at the nature of romantic love itself. So we're looking at illusions so that we have some kind of framework in order to decide which aspects of romantic love may or may not be illusionary. I'd like us to assume that there's mainly two types of illusion. There's one type of illusion where we see something that simply is not there. We see something but it doesn't actually exist. And we think something's true but it's actually not true at all. For example, in terms of romance, somebody wants to marry us so we assume it's because they love us. And they may behave in ways which show that they love us, but they might not love us particularly. It may be they desperately want a child and that anybody will do. It might be they're being pressured by their family to find someone and to get on with their lives. Or they're desperate to have a partner. Or that they believe that as long as they get married, they will be happy ever after, no matter what. So there can be many reasons why somebody would marry us other than the fact that they love us. It could be just a sexual attraction and that the person has convinced themselves that it's love. In such situations, the person may actually fool themselves as much as anyone else because they don't know the difference between a strong sexual attraction with a certain amount of liking and appreciation and love. They just may not know the difference. People can fool themselves and they can fool others at the same time. So that's one type of illusion. We see something... And it's just not there. However, there's another type of illusion. And that's when we see something 
and it is actually there, but we're seeing a very distorted picture of it. So there could be love in the relationship and it can be about bolstering somebody's social standing, security, money, power, whatever. So it could be a mix of a genuine love and all sorts of ego issues. When that's the case, then the love aspect doesn't grow to become the most important part of the relationship and those other issues are still there and too strong, the relationship is likely to run into difficulties. So a romantic relationship may be partly about love and partly about things which have not much to do with love. An illusion is not necessarily a bad thing. It might lead us to a greater understanding of life and help us prepare for our next step into a greater truth. So it's like we evolve as a person through different stages of illusion, with each stage having more truth about it. In other words, we sometimes need to evolve from something which is partly true to something which is more true. As I say, a relationship may well be partly about love, but then the love aspect grows and becomes to dominate the relationship. And so it becomes more true in the sense that if the relationship is claimed to be about love, that, that actually becomes more true as the relationship goes on. In the beginning, we may be partly an illusion, thinking this relationship is all about love. When it wasn't, and then later on, it is all about love, or mostly about love. Or it can go the other way, where different things arise in the people's lives, and the love bit fades, or money issues come into it too much, and those cause the relationship to break apart. There was love in the relationship, but it wasn't enough to withstand the other pressures upon it. Something may be partly an illusion and partly not an illusion. That something being an illusion doesn't automatically make it bad. How do we break free from illusions? How do we break out of them? One way to break through illusions is to do some good hard thinking, to really apply our thinking to the situation and think it through. Let's do a bit of hard thinking around the topic of romantic love and our assumptions about it and the way society presents it to us. Remember earlier I was talking about different types of illusion and one type of illusion is seeing something that just isn't there and another type of illusion is when we see something that does actually exist but we're seeing it in a distorted way. The term glamorous illusion is sometimes applied to that kind of illusion. They have a glamour around them. Now if that seems to you an odd way of using the word glamour, it's actually true to the root of the word. The word glamour is an old Scots word and it partly means a fog or a mist but it can also mean an enchantment or a spell. So if you combine these, a fog or a mist or an enchantment or a spell, that's very much the effect that glamour has on us. We can become enchanted by it. Later on when the glamour collapses then we can go the other way and uh, we get disgusted by it. But basically that's the effect that glamour has on us. It sways our feelings, it sways our emotions. There's often a strong element of emotion to glamorous illusions, sometimes just called a glamour. When we get very starry-eyed about romantic love, then we're seeing it through an attractive glamour. We're seeing it's something beautiful and magnificent that's going to change our life for the better. And to some extent, it does. And then if the relationship ends, or for some reason it all goes wrong, we become bitter and cynical about it, which is another glamour. That's an ugly glamour. It's a repulsive glamour. But each stage is the form of glamour. We're not seeing romantic love as it is in the moment. Each perspective, whether overly optimistic and starry-eyed, or whether overly pessimistic and bitter and, and cynical, is a distortion of our perspective on romantic love. We're seeing romantic love through a fog of illusion. We go from a spell of being starry-eyed and optimistic to a spell of being cynical and pessimistic. But both of them are spells. Both states are seeing through a fog and not seeing reality, not seeing truly. A glamorous illusion is seeing something which exists, but we're not seeing it for real. We're seeing it in a distorted way, and it's usually our emotions that are causing the distortion that are swinging your perspective one way or the other and causing us to not see the situation clearly. When we're seeing things through an attractive glamour, then we're only seeing what we want to see about the person. 
by exaggerating things about the person or situation which appeal to us. We're only focused on the upside. And then we're usually avoiding seeing what potentially could be on the downside. And we're avoiding seeing what does not appeal to us about the person or the situation. So romantic love is not an illusion in the sense that it's not a mirage. It does actually exist. But it can be we're seeing it through illusions. We have illusions about it. So if we're going back to the core teachings of more spiritual paths. None of them say love is an illusion. In fact, they say that love is the ultimate reality. The ultimate form of love is the ultimate reality that we experience when we become more enlightened. So therefore, romantic love is perhaps the aspect of love which we're more able to access at this time in our evolution. As human beings, we're able to connect with it. So it has a real core truth in it to the extent that it's an expression of love itself. So to the extent that we can approach romantic love through this core of love, then we're aligned with this ultimate sense of love, which is where our inner guide is trying to lead us. It may be trying to lead us through romantic love as a way of discovering a deeper form of love and as a pathway to that. But the problem is we create a lot of glamours around it, which causes to be disillusioned later and which completely skews our perspective. First, our perspective is skewed to the upside and the optimistic side. And then later on, it can get skewed to the downside and we become on the pessimistic side. Each view is distorting a perspective. So, so although romantic love is not an illusion, to the extent that it's an expression of this core aspect of love and is leading us towards that. However, we weave all sorts of glamours around it that bring in all sorts of illusions into the situation. 